Hey guys, welcome to week 185 of the Super Mario World Rum Hack Races. Today's level is called Seasonal Triangulation and it's made by the Borgie Man. It's rated 4 out of 10 for difficulty, and this level makes some pretty heavy use of really interesting blocks that allow Mario to run on the ceiling. I'm not completely sure, but I think they may have been created just for this level. Uh, Borgie has made three ROM hack race levels before, as well as Luminescent, which I would probably call my favorite ROM hack. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. Triangles are everywhere. They even allow you to run on ceilings. Use them to your advantage. GLHF. Porgy. So we don't really get a whole lot of information before the race actually starts about what's going to be in the level. Uh, but this time the name having the word triangulation in it hinted very strongly at this being a triangle block focused level. It's a little weird after you get past the triangle block that's going to the ceiling. You just keep holding the same direction to run up the wall. That means that I'm holding right as Mario is moving to the left on the ceiling. Now I am very sure I was doing this part wrong. Uh, these triangle blocks that are facing each other, there's a down arrow up above. The only way I found to get through that part was just to move really slowly, and that feels extremely wrong. Now I do like jumping off this wall to catch the shell that's chasing me down. Now I obviously need this shell to kill the blue Koopa that's in front of me. I had all the time in the world to stop that shell and I wind up jumping in front of it. If I had to guess, you could probably slide over top of those triangles and use that slide to kill that shell. I wasn't able to make that work though because it kept making me go up into the munchers. Now, I didn't realize it until I actually bounced off it, but that's a green shell, which means I can bounce off of it twice. You ordinarily need some space to run up to a triangle block, but if you have full speed, you can just use the block itself. And jumping under those munchers was kind of scary. That block that the Koopa is standing on, it's just like the ones you see in SMB3. Uh, it bounces to the side when you run into it. I just have to catch the shell in the air and then shell jump off of it. In Super Mario World, only four turn blocks can be active at once, so I have to hit these in a specific order to let me run across the ceiling. So I sort of panicked here. Ordinarily in Mario World, you can't carry an item through a door, and I expected to use that shell for something, so I wanted to avoid going into the door until I had already used it. This is a custom door, though, that allows you to carry items through it. I didn't know it was going to be on the other side of that door, and I hesitated just slightly, so I was too slow to get back out the door. Shoutouts to these block swoopers. They let you bounce off of them exactly the same way you would off of a normal enemy, but they don't use the sprite. And this that happens with the fire flower is just magical. I'm holding the Y button to run and I'm just tapping X in order to shoot fire. While I'm running on the ceiling, the fire flower comes out just a little bit higher than it normally would and it allows it to hit that ice block on the ceiling. I wasn't really sure how I was expecting this pipe to work. I tried holding the up button to just enter it as I was running past it and that didn't work. I also tried pressing down to enter it like in Mario Maker, but I had to jump and hold up to go in the pipe. This is Pilot Wings music, and to me it's a subtle cue that we're about to see some cape stuff. A less subtle cue is the feather that we see. The triangle blocks, when you put them together with a cape, 
They work really well together because you're forced to have P speed by the time you're running on walls or on the ceiling. Pulling up out of a dive as you're next to a slope like that is a free way to give sticky flight. I don't use it here, but it's possible to cape spin as you're running on the wall or on a ceiling by tapping the second run button, just like the fire flower earlier. And I've still got P-Speed as I'm running down this wall, so I just fly over to the right here. I sort of expect that I can just run over those P-Switches to activate them, uh, but it's like the pipe before. I have to jump into them and hit them with my head. And I also realized as I came back to those munchers, that's a silver P-Switch, so it turned all the regular munchers into coins. I didn't really understand where my path was going to go, but really there was only one direction for me to go, so I just keep moving. By this point, I think I'm at least decent at cape. I think we've had three levels in a row now that have featured cape in some way. So instead of jumping off here, I just keep running. And that's my indication that I can start hitting things on the ceiling. I think it's a really rare Kaizo level that's going to give you both a Fire Flower and a Cape to use. You can kind of guess as you come in this section and see the pipes, it's going to be a windy fight. You need to have a pretty good run up to that edge to keep your speed that you need to actually cling to the wall and the ceiling. The difficulty here really is just in timing your run to be able to hit Wendy no matter what spot that she's in. This is a completely random pattern every time, so you can't just remember where she's going to come up. You have to react to what you see as it's happening. And you really just have to jump off of whatever's available to you to save yourself from that lava. And ordinarily, Wendy is three hits, so I'm expecting that to be the last hit, but we've now learned it's at least four. And there's our fifth and final Wendy hit. My time this week was 14 minutes and 10 seconds. That put me in fourth place out of 30 racers who finished. I think I've enjoyed everything I've ever played that the Borgie Man has made, and this was no exception. I had a really good time with this one. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, I'm going to keep putting out these videos showing my part of every week's ROM hack race. Please subscribe if you'd like to see more here on YouTube. You can also find me on Twitch and TikTok. My links are down in the description. It's over!